Hello, hello, hello. I'm here for day eight of my big learnings of 2019. And today I am talking all about doing more of what scares you. Now, I, I really faced my fears this year. Um, and I, I'm normally someone that doesn't sit comfortably in my comfort zone. I am normally someone that's pretty good with risks. Um, but there was definitely something this year that scared the bejesus out of me that I had been called to do for a few years. And I found my excuses and I put it off and I put it off. Um, until in 2017, I just, you know what, I just bit the bullet and I thought, I'm going to have to do this scared and just do it because I was never going to remove the fear. Um, I was never going to do enough mindset work to clear the fear before I did it. Nothing was ever going to be perfect for me to do it. So I just realized that, you know, I'd have to take that massive leap of faith and just do it anyway. And the thing that I did was to create my own two day event, which was a conference with speakers and me speaking on stage. Now, the reason that that was something that scared me so much, even though I'm pretty visible online, I do things like this. Um, and I have spoken before on stage. However, I had a real fear of it. So when I used to do it back in my kind of digital marketing days, when I was on the speaker circuit for the kind of digital marketing world in London, and I spoke on some amazing stages, um, but I really had to force myself to do it. It was never a nice thing for me. I was also really fearful, always really fearful. Um, and I remember that the, oh, just gives me, goosebumps thinking about it not good goosebumps either um my last event in that kind of role that i spoke at i was actually quite heavily pregnant um and i think because of that and and everything that was going on with me the fear got too much and i actually went on stage and i think i had a bit of a panic attack and so my my throat actually closed up i couldn't speak it was horrendous. Thankfully, I was speaking on stage with someone else and she stepped in and took over. Thank the Lord. I will love her forever for doing that. But it was such an excruciating moment. And I can remember standing there on stage with all the, it was on a, in a proper theater as well. So there were loads of lights. There's about 100, 200 people in the audience. Um, and there I was just completely unable to speak. And it was my worst nightmare. And I remember walking off that stage and that was back in 2012, walking off that stage thinking I will never ever speak on stage again. I am now done. I will never need to do that. So telling you that story kind of paints the picture of what a fear it was for me and how big that was. Mm -hmm. And I promised I'd never do it, yet I was being pulled to do this event. So I launched Elevate Live. We, sold, we pretty much almost sold out um, the first one, which I was thrilled at. It was a two-day event last May. Well, yeah, last May, this year. Um, and I was petrified. And I worked, I worked with the amazing Chantelle to work on my talk because not only – was I going to stand on stage and do three different talks over the two days and sort of be on and off the stage and so on? I'd also decided to share my very personal story for the first time of some quite traumatic things that have happened to me. <laughs> so, thinking back, I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> why? But I went for it and I was petrified. And I had to have an, a session with the amazing Marie Holden just before the first day. She came to my hotel room and gave me some kinesiology and did some energy work to just calm me down. Um, and I went and did it. And I got on stage, uh, first person on the first day. And I got on and I told my story. And I cried and the people cried. And it was one of the most emotional things I've ever done. 
but it was also one of my proudest proudest moments and i'm kind of fighting back tears sharing that with you because it was huge for me like this fear was massive and i remember coming off that stage after i'd done that talk thinking i don't care what happens for the rest of the event i have done it i've done it i can mess up all of my other talks but i've done it and i got through it even though i cried a little bit and it was one of my proudest achievements and after and I, I was elated after elevate live i am so proud of what we did there it was an amazing event next year's is going to be an amazing event because I'm fine with it now. I have no issue. I faced the fear and I have no fear anymore. So I'm running it again next June. And it was one of the most amazing things I've done. However, had I not gone against the fear, had I stayed in my comfort zone, I would never be here. I would never have had that achievement. I would never have had that moment that will stay with me forever. Um, and I would never have fought it. And I'd still be stuck in the same place. And I really wanted to share that with you because it was a massive learning for me. It was a big moment for me. Um, it makes me feel really emotional just talking about it. And I wanted to share that with you because I know that for a lot of you guys, it's the same. You have your own fear, whatever that fear is, whether it's an event or stage or anything. Maybe it's just coming on a live like this, which incidentally I used to be scared of as well until I got used to it. So really think about that because so many people are playing school small because they're letting the fear take over. Don't let the fear take over. Do it anyway. Do it scared and then see how you feel on the other side because most people on the other side feel really freaking proud of themselves. And it's a real step up. Like for me, that was one of my biggest up levels. Now, don't get me wrong. I had some serious up leveling after that to deal with, but it was one of my biggest up levels um, that anyone can do if you face your fears. So I'm hoping some of that resonates with you guys today. If it has, think about how you can face that fear in 2020.